Welcome and good afternoon, everyone, to the Capture Data Listen, Listen to Nature session of the Digital Food Series 2023. Um, today, we have a session about Let's Grow, which is a data platform um, developed with the use of uh, years of collected uh, data and understanding of how to analyze data and to uh, um, learn basically list, listen to nature. Uh, to start, um, my name is Tiffany Tsui. I'm the host of the Digital Food Series. I'm a green development strategist and consultant. Other than hosting the Digital Food Platform, I'm also a managing partner at the Vertical Farm Institute, which will be also featured in the next session of the Digital Food Series. Um, also like to introduce uh, first the team on digital food, that is Dick Fiemann and uh, Anushka. So we developed the concept of digital food to focus on the theme of connect. So connect data, technology and strategy and to connect people, ideas and regions. Uh, over the last two years, we have uh, uh, host a series of debate and discussions on how do you capture the value of digital transformation. In the recent series of user cases, we want to address the, the questions such as what is needed to create trust among connected players in a system? How do we define value allocation models for providing data, transforming them and applying information throughout the entirety of the food chain? So today's uh, speaker is Martin Fontol. Hope Martin will uh, tell us what is Let's Grow uh, doing to answer these uh, questions on creating trust and capturing the value. Um, to Before we start, let's have a, a, a quick uh, poll question. Anushka. So, I don't, if you have uh, followed uh, recent development, this is uh, an open letter recently addressed by the Future of Life Institute. Um, asked the question, should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber our smart and replacing us? So my question to our participant today will be, are, are you worried or excited by the rapid progress in AI exemplified, if you haven't heard or have heard, uh, ChatGPT? So please make your choice. Uh, Martin. What is your uh, thinking? You are in the field of the data-driven growth. So yeah. let's grow, will let's grow become the ChatGPT of the CEA world? I don't know that, but uh, I, I'm excited uh, the, the new development because um, for us, uh, AI is a, is a good tool to, to create information needed to take the decisions as a human being. And sometimes uh, it can help uh, simplify life for growers uh, in our field, in this case, uh, to do more uh, with less people because uh, the knowledge of people who can grow are getting rarer and rarer. So yeah, it, it is better. It, it's good that it's there. So I'm, uh, yes, I'm excited. We also use AI in, in, in prediction modeling. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious where, the, where, we're, yeah, where AI will help us in the future. Okay, well, let's see uh, Anushka if we have the result already. Oh, Anushka stepped away. Ah, okay. Well, I guess most people are excited like you are, Martin, <laughs> about yeah. today, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Not uh, to worry about existential uh, crisis on humans yet. Yes. Oh, there's also a couple of people saying not sure, but uh, yeah, I think that's a good discussion. Why you're not sure and, and why you're excited? Because uh, and and I think it's also your mindset uh, towards AI and what AI means uh, and what it can bring you. Uh, but yeah, I can imagine sometimes it's a, it's a it's difficult to understand for me as well. Uh, even though we use it in a, in a, in our daily work. Um, but for us, AI is uh, is uh, is helpful in the way where we do it. But it's not a mean, so it, it justifies the end. Eh? So it helps to create the information that we want 
Uh, and for us, AI is not basically the way to go, but it can help. Certainly, yeah. Good. So let's start tell by telling us uh, then exactly what do you do and how do you use data and AI in your job and in the product? Yes. Go ahead. I will share my screen and, and please interrupt me if I'm going too fast or you have any questions whatsoever. Uh, please let, let me know. And then uh, we can uh, we can go from there. Yes, so, please. Uh, let's grow. Uh, we're basically uh, the worldwide expert in data-driven growing. Uh, we help basically growers all over the world uh, in closed environments, but also open environments uh, to grow efficiently and sustainable uh, by making intelligent use of, of their own data. And we deliver analyzes and advice that can help you increase productivity and we're doing this with a strong team of uh, and uh, a strong team of enthusiastic colleagues uh, to achieve this. Uh, what, where do we stand for as as a company? Uh, uh, let's grow. Basically, says okay. What we're very very keen on is that we say okay. We want to embrace nature. So, what do we stand for? We embrace nature, floors together. We strongly believe in this because. Uh, we embrace nature in everything that we do, in how we work and how we uh, behave, and why we. Uh, and this is really where we stand for. For example, we put always we put the plant at the center of how we work, uh, but also for our uh, uh, intelligent algorithms are based on a proven plant physiology uh, concept called plant empowerment. So what we do is we always listen to the plant. We will put the plant central. So we embrace the nature, and by doing that. We ensure that the plant will flourish as much as possible. And we will do this together with the plant, but also together with the people and we're working on the plants, with the plants. So we strongly believe that you can only make progress by working together. Um, and this can be seen basically throughout the whole of Let's Grow. We work together with clients, partners, suppliers, uh, and of course, uh, also between the colleagues and the departments uh, to take us further in the future uh, and, and collaborations on that with our clients. What do we do? We centralize uh, data, we visualize data and we analyze data. And of course, with the, all with the goal to optimize uh, in the end. Uh, within uh, our system called My Let's Grow, we collect the data from all production sites and we can centralize uh, it in one location. And we can access data from all brands of climate computers, uh, wireless sensors, ERP systems, sorting machines and granny machines, labor systems, energy systems, uh, you name it. The, uh, so that's the first part. So we will, we will centralize it, then we visualize it. Uh, the data from uh, all the different sources are combined on one platform, allowing you to view the, the status of your operational processes in one glance. Uh, you can access your data wherever, you, uh, wherever you're at in the world. Uh, the only thing you need is basically internet. So it doesn't matter if your growing sites are closed or far away, you can always access uh, the way things are going. Uh, by doing that, uh, we can help also analyze, and eh? not only analyze data, but also images. Uh, with the use of artificial intelligence, uh, with smart algorithms and uh, physiological plant and analysis, allows us reliable in, uh, information access to the activities and the next steps to take within the growing uh, process. If we have all that kind of information and uh, we have basically all everything that we need, we can also with AI and the data that we have, we can analyze it to see, okay, what happened in the greenhouse and uh, how the plant's reacting on it and what the plant needs to get to uh, the end goal. So it will help make you reliable strategic decisions. And that way you can optimize uh, your growing uh, uh, concept. We're doing this already for more than 20 years all over the world. We have more than 50 plus employees. Um, 
not only in the Netherlands, but also like in China, we have our own platform, but we also have people located in Canada and uh, Mexico. We're in more than 45 plus countries and we have more than 2000 users of the platform. We have more and the 20 years experience, we not only did it by ourselves, uh, that's basically st uh, starting also with the uh, uh, collaboration of Wageningen University and, uh, and our sister company Hohendorn, and uh, where we uh, sprung off, we always search for those correlations with our partners, with our customers, with research centers, uh, with crop consultants. So we're really focusing on how can we make the world, uh, in this case uh, of, uh, of horticulture, even better than it already is. Uh, so we know that we cannot do it alone. We need to do it together. Uh, that's why we always say uh, you cannot go, uh, if you want to go uh, far, far uh, fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's really what we do. But that sounds nice, of course, but how do we do that? Uh, we have some vision about that, of course, as well, uh, to approach a data-driven data growing situation for your greenhouse. Basically, this will summarize a little bit of the process that we uh, follow. First, we always start by collecting all the data. And it can be via partner systems, manual input, computers, uh, machines, censoring, uh, ERP systems. But then we have a lot of data. And there is a lot of data. But data by itself doesn't say much and we always need to find the correlation between certain elements and if we find that we can turn data into information and that's what we do uh, with let's grow and we add value to create information and once again that uh, uh, added value is not only from uh, our experience in the 20 years but also working with researchers working with the growers working with the crop consultants and of course uh, our analyzing tools that we created, our growth and plant modules based on plant physics and uh, artificial intelligence that helps us create even better information than uh, uh, than we had in the future and in the past. So the future looks bright. Um, Martin, allow me, allow me to jump in here. Yeah. Um, this is, so it could be very useful for seed companies like Rexvan or Enza to mm -hmm. work with you doing going it together is that actually what is already happening do you help seed companies or can seed companies help you in developing seeds for specifically controlled environments uh we work closely together uh, and of course they use uh, uh, information that they gather from their own growing facility but also uh facilities from uh from and uh, the, their customers uh, but we also have sometimes uh, are in close contact with uh, seed companies and have discussions about, okay, how does the plant of the future needs to look like? And we're not only talking about uh, all the data and all the censoring that's in and surrounding the greenhouse, but also uh, uh, robots that are entering the greenhouse. How does the plant, uh, how, does they, uh, how do they affect the plant? And if we listen closely to the plant and we put more sensors in and on it, how does the plant react on it? So yeah, we, we definitely have uh, collaboration on that and we have discussion sessions with them, uh, but it's not only us, that's uh, the whole sector. So I think that's a good thing because everybody uh, uh, needs to have like uh, 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 the same plan and the same idea about where we're heading to. And then yeah, we can create nice things uh, together. Yes, thank you. Please go on. All right, thank you. Uh, so we have that information and uh, we, we created all that information. And from there on, uh, you have all the information for researching, of course, and we already discussed a little bit, Dick, uh, consultancy. So people can have uh, all over the world, uh, you have better consultancy. It will help make decisions, decisions uh, easier. So you can take decisions based on facts rather than only on God feelings. And in the end, 
yeah, it will help optimize your growth and, and then creating a better return of investment in the end. And it's also a good way to compare and benchmark uh, on what you're doing, uh, why are you doing things, and what is even better that you can do. But to get all the information, yeah, we will, and what I already mentioned, we can connect to different data sources. But not only that, we can also give uh, information to other uh, people like data analysts, crop consultants, or energy consultants. They have their own expertise and they can give that feedback to us as well. And so the grower has basically can have everything together uh, on one platform. You can display it on one that platform. And then you already see it's like there's an ISO certificate. Let's grow as an ISO certificate 27,001. Why is that? Because for us, that's an indicator that we use data uh, wisely. So uh, it's safe with us. And uh, the data is always, the, the owner of the data is always the grow in our case. And so it's their intellectual property. So they will decide who they can share the data with, uh, what they want to do with the data. We're only the keepers and we don't use it for anything else than uh, making their life easier. And uh, for us, that's very, very important to, to, to establish that we have that one. But why do we do this? And why do we want all that data? And why do you need all that data? That's basically to answer very simple questions, only that are di very difficult. Um, but it always starts to figure out what happened in the greenhouse or uh, what happened in your, in your facility. To do that, we need to collect the data. You can share the data. Uh, and we have the modules, you can implement those modules or we can create together modules to figure out why things are happening and why did it happen. So we can start analyzing, not only us, but together. Uh, so we can ask the, the question, what's going to happen uh, with predictive modeling, like weather forecasting, we can uh, uh, in incorporate that in some modules from us so where we can indicate, okay, this will probably going to be the temperature in the greenhouse for the upcoming days, or this will be your growing uh, uh, module. And so uh, you need to uh, lower your temperature or you have to slow down the growth a little bit or speed it up uh, to get the goal that you achieve, uh, set for yourself. So for us, it's all about answering these types of questions. What happened? Why did it happen? And if we know that, we can uh, look forward in the future and to see what's going to happen. Now, if we have all those answers, and then we can take the step to what's the best that can happen. It's basically uh, also automize processes. To do that, we also need like good controlling systems in our in, in the greenhouse industry uh, and a good strategy and a philosophy. And our philosophy is based on the plant empowerment principles. Uh, but together, uh, taking all these steps, uh, we already can say, okay, we can give feedback to a control system and that the climate control and the, and the control system can take over some parts of, uh, of the grower. So we can automize or autom uh, autonomous, yeah, grow autonomously if you, if you want to call it that way. The method behind that is basically starting with all the data collection, analyzing that, uh, setting the targets, uh, creating uh, decision support toolings, uh, and uh, using the right controls. Uh, but to do that, we need to first have a good strategy. And already mentioned for us, the plant is always cru crucial because it's giving us all the feedback that we want and need to see if we're on the right track or not. So that's why the plant is central and we really listen to the plant. So the, the most important thing is a good quality strategy. And from there on, you can do the plan, do, check, act method also within growing uh, within the growing uh, facility. That way, basically we can grow by blueprints and we can create blueprints. And if we have those strategies, we have those tooling, we have the targets that we want to set, we have the strategy that we can make, 
We know if our plant, uh, crop is healthy or not. Then we have all the ingredients to automize or autonomize. Uh, and so good quality controls for realization of everything and good quality strategy based on, in our case, plant empowerment. And I'll come back later on what's plant, what plant empowerment is. And of course the tooling to set the targets, to create the targets, but also monitoring if we're on track or not. Uh, Martin, maybe we can take a break here okay. before you move into the plant empowerment uh, approach. Um, because in the beginning, we asked you about uh, the development of AI, what does it mean for jobs? Mm -hmm. And also the question of uh, how do you create trust within the system and how do you provide, define your business model for value allocation of the, the data? Because in, in terms of uh, uh, plan empowerment or the let's grow approach, it's basically, you can say, well, from te technology wise, it's a lot of censoring, you collect the data, you help a uh, decision-making system. Mm -hmm. um, the question is what makes it unique for, um, because you apply mainly horticulture and how does this connect to, for example, the wider agri-food uh, system, where is, which is the kind of focus of our digital food audience. Yeah, no, that that's, uh, was the uh, last part of the presentation. And uh, how can we incorporate this in different sectors? Um, what we see is that the, the approach and the philosophy on how uh, what to do uh, can be uh, used in, in, in different ways. Uh, if you already see what we're doing with partnerships, uh, then you see, okay, it's not about uh, taking out uh, the use of people. No, it's creating the right circumstances for people to take the necessary uh, uh, decisions. Uh, and that's not only for, for uh, in this case, the horticulture sector. It can also be other sectors because you want to make the decisions. Yeah? And there are a lot of people with knowledge. Uh, sometimes they do it by experience. Sometimes they do it with uh, uh, information. But what's better than the information created via the data? And that will get, that's always the feedback. So that's not only for the growing part, can also be like in, uh, in other sectors that you want to make the decisions on. So that's what you want to create. So you can do jobs easier, uh, even better, or one person can do more by himself or herself. That's what you want to achieve. And, and, and to do that, you always start with a good strategy doesn't matter what you do. You always want to follow a certain strategy because you have set the goals for you as a company. Uh, and it doesn't matter which kind of sector or which kind of companies. You always have a, 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 a strategy in mind where you want to end in one year, two years, or maybe five years time. And how do we walk that line? It's uh, For me, it's always like comparison, like, okay, if we uh, go into, if we go to a place, we always start up Google Maps, for example, or another type of uh, uh, system that help us toward, to, towards the traffic. So we say we go from A to B, and then we choose for us the best option and the most sustainable way, most uh, uh, quickest way, uh, now, you name it, you can choose that. But then the, the system will guide us. The system will tell us, okay, how hard you can drive, uh, uh, the, what's the speed limit? Uh, what's uh, uh, is there traffic on the road? Did you take a wrong turn? How to get back on the right track again? That's basically what you want to do and what you can achieve with data um, as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I, I, and I, I, go ahead, Dick. Tiffany, if you indeed, if you allow me, because the question that is burning on my lips now is, what is your rate of success? So. You're working back from your goal. Some people say we work back from the future to today uh, with a certain amount of, of, of accuracy. Mm -hmm. So if I set a strategy, a goal in terms of I want this production, so that much kilos per hectare um, or per square meter, that is more correct in, in horticulture. What is the rate of success if I set a goal like that? Yeah, that depends on, of course, if you follow your strategy or not. Eh? Are you really 
hitting the targets and and, and no, but I mean, I mean, I, we we really so actually, uh, the promise is if you set a goal, you'll find the most efficient way to realize it. And yeah, in, in some cases where we we achieved like uh, in in an example in Mexico. Uh, we made a comparison between the old way of growing and the new way of growing and uh, based on data, based on the plant philosophy uh, and with guidance, with a good strategy to follow the strategy, to monitor that. Uh, and in the end, uh, the result was a higher uh, production, a less use of less resources. So, uh, so it was a more sustainable way of growing. We had higher pr uh, production. So in the end, uh, we had 12 US dollars more net profit per square meter. Wow. But it, so, so in order to just to, to understand what it does is you can work back from, but you can't predict this will be my yield with yeah, we, you, an in, economy in, in, of etc. In a certain degree you can. And then we have, uh, because we have calculation modules that uh, if you, Looking back at uh, back at uh, the past, when we know, okay, this is the amount of light that you have. This is the, the average temperature. If you grow based on based on this strategy, this will probably be the outcome. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So you can you you use the past to create a little bit of the future and the way and you want to achieve that. And, and the, the more you optimize. The and the more experience you have, the better it will predict your rate of success. Uh, not, not really the, the experience, because that's the beauty of data. It's can also it's more about how much reliable data do you have. So also less experienced people can achieve the same results as experienced people. Right. So actually, you can import. You can import past performance yeah how do you value that if you sell past performance from another grower to a new grower uh, and that's the tricky part we don't do that right because that's use useless in our case because each greenhouse each growing facility is different even when they're standing next to each other when they slightly turn there's a whole different uh, climate within so we don't use data from one grower and to uh, give back to the other grower what we what we do is people that don't have um uh like in in abroad you see more and more greenhouses being built with no prior history then we say okay together with uh, you already mentioned uh, uh, the seed companies we can say okay if you follow this these basics you already have We'll probably have around this amount of, of, of uh, uh, tomatoes or whatever. But, but you that's do... really a basic. That's really basic. And then from there on, you focus on the greenhouse itself and then optimize it. Thank you. It's rule of uh, rule of thumb. And then you start to learn in your context. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Back to you, Tiffany. Yes. So the you know, next part, you will talk about plant empowerment, which is an important part of the value creation and also the creating trust, isn't it? You need to work with partners. So yeah. please also indeed tell us a bit more about the, what is the difference between let's grow and plant empowerment and how do you work together between the different companies and partners? Yeah, no, uh, that, that, uh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Tiffany. So plant empowerment is basically basically an, a, a unique growing approach. It's not our philosophy, but it's a philosophy uh, we as Let's Grow embrace. Uh, basically, uh, plant empowerment is, is an uh, approach. It's, it's, found, uh, it's, it's written down in a book, and it started in, in the Dutch uh, to basically grow more uh, um, with uh, grow more with less energy. But then the people say, yeah, but there's more than only saving energy. So they've written down this philosophy in this book called uh, Plant Empowerment. And it's a, it's a data-driven growing uh, philosophy and it leads to higher production and better quality. 
Uh, at the same time, uses uh, it will help you reduce resources such as water, energy, and nutrition. So this is really helping creating the right roadmap to a sustainable way of growing. This is this is this book is founded in 2016, and uh, by the founders of uh, Peter Gele, Jan Vogt, and Peter van Wil. It's an international bestseller. Thousand like six thousand books already been sold. Uh, all over the world. It's available in English, Spanish, and Dutch. But it's not only for growers. It can be used for investors, uh, governments, consultancies, suppliers, uh, R&D facilities. And it's been used a lot in uh, uh, universities like Wageningen University, Ohio State University, Haas Hogeschool. It really helps the growers of the future to grow and think more data minded and putting listening to putting the plant really central. So that, that's the combination that we had with the principles, eh? putting the plant central and, and from there on floors really together because yeah, for us, it's a proven method because we already put this principle in work in all different regions all over the world with a uh, high temperature climate, low temperature climate, high humidities. The principles is always the same because it's uh, based on uh, plant physiology. That's what makes it very unique. And it helps us to find the limiting factor because that's, that's basically how we can optimize uh, the next step because we're, uh, that's good, not only for the plant or for, for growing, it's basically with everything in life. We uh, are as good as our limiting factor. So if we change and, and optimize our limiting factor, a new limiting factor probably will occur, but we will have the first step to optimization. And that's why we always focus on, okay, what, are, uh, what are we doing? What is our limiting factor? And how can we play with those limiting factors? How can we create the best circumstances, or how can we adapt to that limiting factor? It basically is a, it is, it is a guide to optimization, and it is like push, putting all those pieces of a puzzle together, monitoring to keep the puzzle, uh, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle together, and from there on creating the piece and, and, and the possibility to create overviews, to create uh, all the information that I need so I can also grow via distance. Eh? So I don't always need to be in a greenhouse, but I can also be somewhere else. So I can spread uh, basically, mm, yeah, one person. I, one person doesn't always have to be on location. He can be somewhere else. That's, that's the basically unique principle of this uh, and growing, uh, and growing type as plant department. And this is now ready. We started with six partners, uh, six leading companies in horticulture. Uh, and from this year on, there are uh, like six new partners uh, added to uh, the consortium. And uh, we started uh, with Svensson, with uh, Hortilux, with Koppart, with Hogendorn, Let's Grow, Cultilana, but now also companies like Rijkswaan, uh, Bazef also joined because they really believe in this this new approach and the data driven grow and the data driven approach and and what are those basically the benefits of of, of a data driven because that's where we want to look at if we look at data and growing based uh, the data driven growing we can create the perfect solution for every ch uh, uh, challenge because we can set the right strategy. We can focus on plant health. We have all the data, uh, so all the information we need. We can set the targets. We can follow the targets. We can analyze everything what happened. And next to that, we have the, the philosophy so we can help and train and guide people on that philosophy. So we can have the data-driven growing trainings. We can have the trainings on plant empowerment. And that way you will create the perfect solution for every challenge uh, that we face. So every growing needs and will have a good strategy. And we need to monitor and measure all those things every time. 
we can create overviews based on live data. So once again, it helped us not only grow based on, 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 on feelings, eh? like we call them in the Netherlands, the green fingers, but we can also grow based on facts. So it's not only for the experienced people who can use the system, eh? the, 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 eh? the, the way of data-driven growing, but also the less experienced people and people who needs to eh? experience people who are going to train less experienced people. They have now also the tooling to show what's happening uh, in, in their facilities. And so you will combine basically experience with facts and step by step, you will switch from growing based on feelings towards facts, growing on facts. So you become data-driven growing and you come, become data-driven. And the beauty of that, you will have a data-driven organization. That means you have all your information, all your data in one platform. So when somebody leaves the company, it doesn't take it doesn't take away your entire intellectual property. No, the next grower in your growing facility can sit down, take a look. Okay, what did uh, what do you want to achieve? How do you want to achieve it? And go from there. And 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 then of course use his own theory, his own training, his own mindset to, to focus on certain small parts to optimize uh, your way of growing. And that, that's the benefit of data, the benefit of using the system, using uh, algorithms, using artificial intelligence that will help us in the future to, to grow more with less resources, but also with the lack of people who know how to grow. They will have the right tooling to do so. Is this something only growers can use? No. Uh, we achieve results not only for growers, but for the entire uh, production company, for entire production companies, but also managers, crop consultants and investors, and also suppliers. Basically, what you can achieve is that the right data, the right information, get to the right people on the right time. And that's what you want to achieve. Not only when you grow tomatoes, or that's always what you want to achieve. And in this case, we will help uh, to improve that. Uh, and, and once again, this is not what we do together. And sometimes we even help like suppliers or, or partners can be in the same sector, but also outside the sector. Um, an example, for example, is a partnership that we have with MPS. Yeah? That's a company that gives certificates on uh, the uh, or, uh, on, on the CO2 carbon footprints. Uh, they had a lot of data, but not quite all data. And people wanted to calculate their, uh, their, their, their footprints during a growing season and, and to think about already in the next growing season, okay, what do we need to adjust to may uh, grow even more sustainable? Together, we created the Horty Footprint Calculator. This is an easy tool with a combination of the knowledge of MPS, the knowledge of uh, Let's Grow, and then we combine it together. So people can now see, okay, what is my current status of my carbon footprint, and what if I adjust something and change, uh, uh, for example, in this case, substrate. If I choose another type of substrate, what will this effect be on my carbon footprint? Not directly important for uh, my growing per se, but it's very important for the company and for the consumer. So we also do things, we can help things outside only the growing part. And, and then we get a little bit back to the question uh, we started, is it also possible for other sectors? Um, I believe I believe so, yeah, because we see a lot of sectors where there's a lot of data already available. Um, and where we started with, it's not about 
uh, data per se, but it's the correlations that you need to find. Uh, we have experience in collecting all different data sources. And if we can work together with companies they have, that have knowledge in their fields, that can be micro fermentation or maybe in the poultry, um, we can do nice things together. And we see a picture, for example, in the poultry way with the RNET, that's a sensor supply. We also have connections with RNET in the horticultural way. Uh, in poultry, we also measure temperature, CO2, and humidity, same as in horticulture. So there are basically a lot of overlapping. And still, it's okay, how can we help each other to create the optimal value out of the data? And how can we make sure the, uh, the right tools, calculation tooling, artificial intelligence, uh, algorithms, can put in place on the right time at the right moment to create the right information need that you need to have to take the right decisions. That's basically what we can help you with. Also, I think in other sectors, but I'm very curious how other people look at that uh, uh, at that point. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Um, indeed, actually, most of our audience in the past on the digital food platform are not from the horticulture. So it's good that you uh, draw correlations to other sectors and potential opportunities co for collaboration. Um, we have also a small group today. So I would uh, like to just invite everybody to hop in, jump in for discussions and relating to your sector of experience, of expertise, uh, and reflect how do we uh, learn from this data platform. So please just raise your hand or yeah, or just put your question in, in, in the chat and I will uh, call on you. So Martin, I, you're, I, yeah, go I, ahead, Dick. I'd like to invite Fernando. I, I see he is here from Bula. Um, he is obviously uh, creating, so uh, making milling machines, milling, in, produ in producing eggs and poultry is obviously something that could be very interesting. So how to optimize indeed production in the poultry field. Uh, Fernando, you are. Hello, so everyone. You make... How are you? Hello, Fernando. Good to see you. Good to um, see you again. You, you are producing these machines full of uh, intelligence, collecting data. Uh, Martin, I know uh, he's talking to the poultry, the, the meat industry, mm -hmm. uh, and eggs, isn't it, Martin? I don't know about eggs, but um, if we pull together here what we've seen in the digital food series, we've seen Bula, we've seen MOBA. MOBA uh, assesses the quality of the egg, and they can go way back in, in the system. Bringing this together, feed, and meat and ag quality could be managed this way, this way back. Is there an opportunity there, according to you, Fernando, if you see this? Yeah, we, we could see an opportunity in this. I mean, at the, at the time we are, as Martin mentioned, we as well doing some research on artificial intelligence and trying to bring all this data and these data layers together and make much more sense what all the data we are we are collecting. So there is an opportunity for that. I think most of the companies in the food industry that they have connecting machines, we are exploring these ways to analyze data and to bring new value for our customers and to bring traceability for our customers on that. Basically, and um, as well, there is a huge focus on sustainability and uh, CO2, CO2 quantify, quantification. Um, yeah. For sure, it has a big value this on our business. Okay. And Fernando, in our session with the Bueller, we also talked about actually with the, the session on Pestron, we talked about while technology can translate across sectors, a lot of time the, the boundary is not the technology, but the, the organizational culture or uh, stakeholder who is benefiting, which become the boundary why a solution that work in horticulture cannot work in poetry, for example, for chickens, for, for pigs. So do you see that, that the, what might be the obstacles to implement, let's say, the let's grow 
kind of philosophy, kind of consortia approach to another sector like the, let's say the chicken or the-, the I, I think there is learnings. We can move from one sector to another sector. I mean, for example, we just work, we don't have anything to do with meat or poultry or any animal animal technology, we just provide feed to them and we provide, well, we provide feed, we provide technology to create the feed to the animals, but we don't work in any animal animal system. But in terms of traceability, in terms of use of technology, I think there is many similarities between the different industries and the learnings, of course, are, and the learnings and the barriers, I would say, are the same at the moment. I mean, data, data sharing is a huge barrier at the moment between business, industries, and everyone. I think yes. that's what we are facing and we're still facing and we struggle to overcome this data sharing idea and collaboration between different members of the of the supply chain. Thanks, sir, Fernando, which Welcome. is a question I want to direct back to Martin. Indeed, data sharing and uh, reluctance to share, that's a big issue in the bigger agri-food world. And then you mentioned the, the plan empowerment with the starting of six members and now expanding to 12 large members, very impressive, but they're 12. So what about the other hundreds? So is let's grow the data platform, the platform for data sharing. Are you one of the data platforms of uh, uh, the horticulture? At the moment, we, we, we are doing this more than 20 years. So we have the more, most experience in the field. They're, they're now popping up. Uh, as Fernando already mentioned, uh, uh, data is, is something huge. Um, Everybody is looking into, okay, how can we uh, use it? What can we do? So you see more competitors in this field. Uh, we already lost in 20 years a lot of competitors as well. Um, uh, but we're doing this not only with the, the 12 uh, 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 partners, and uh, but data sharing is... It, it, it's a mindset. Uh, I agree with Fernando. That's very difficult to create because the beauty is where we started 20 years ago. One of the reasons was to share data between Dutch growers. And why did they want to do that? And that's unfortunately the one thing that we, I almost only see in the Netherlands is that even though they're competitors, they share not all information, but some information together to learn from each other. Because why should I make the same mistakes as my neighbor? Or maybe I can learn from his actions. And that's what they do in the Netherlands when it comes to growing. So that's where we started 20 years ago was people saying, okay, we have all types of different data sources, climate computers. How can we connect to them in an easy way so we can have discussions on why do we do certain things? What happened? And, and because we in the Netherlands, we have a saying there are multiple ways to roam. And so you always choose one route but sometimes uh, you face problems but if i already faced that problems in a previous growing cycle i can talk to you about that or we can dis have discussions about it and that way we all learn from that and that's that's where we started 20 years ago doing in the netherlands we still do that in the netherlands that's still one of our key objective in the netherlands when uh, when we uh, when we go abroad we see certain hesitation of sharing that data between companies, but you see slightly changing that mindset. And, 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 and to, yeah, because in the end, why do we need to make the same mistakes all over again? Everybody makes mistakes, but if we can prevent those mistakes from happening, and we can also learn from our mistakes, but also things that uh, went well, if we can help that on, and we can help each other in that way, we will create a high level that we uh, we need to have. Yes, the hortico Dutch horticulture, of course, is very unique. There's a long history of a collaboration and sharing data. But then also back to the question is, with as we started at the beginning, that we have we are entering a world of large machines and data, and then newcomers into the data world, including the agri food world. So what, how does the future look like? For example, I'd like to invite uh, Zhang Xuzhang in our, he's joining us. He's uh, from WEM Planet, I think. Um, with, they're also working on autonomous solutions. So I'd like to invite uh, Xuzhang to give some comments of what you're doing in maybe quick introduction. And how do you see that the working together with, uh, for example, with Let's Grow? With, uh, 
Uh, thanks, Tiffany, for the introduction, and thanks, Martin, for the nice presentation. It's quite inspiring. Uh, so uh, we're definitely on the same mindset. Like, so I think like data data driven growing in the future, and we believe, uh, like Tiffany said, like the Dutch growing com community is quite special. So if you compare the average performance compared to the other side of the world, uh, the production per square meter is just impressive, just amazing. But like, um, how can we actually share the knowledge? um to the other region the other part of the world who is more in need to help them maybe to boost up performance by uh not to the same level by another few percentage i think that's going to be already quite helpful mm -hmm. uh, maybe one question from my side actually is like uh, like martin said everything is actually from the data collection um but from your perspective um do you see some missing data that's quite essential to complete the plant empowerment puzzle? Or do you see the current data quality, the frequency, and is sufficient uh, to support us to go to this ultimate goal in the future? Uh, good question, uh, good question. Um, to come back on how can we share knowledge, that's why we have the Plant Empowerment Consortium, because we give training, lectures, and, and also uh, uh, not only to growers, but also to universities. Uh, so that's a, that's a one way. Uh, to come back to the question uh, the, and the data quality, uh, sensors are getting better and better. There are more robots creating also uh, additional information or data where we can make better correlations. Uh, one thing that we still do manually in, in, in horticulture is like crop measurements. Uh, especially in the head of the canopy. If you say, okay, uh, where should be, yeah, where, where do we need to focus on? I think that will be the next step because everybody's focusing, of course, on uh, robots, sharing, uh, robots for uh, harvesting and, and, and delivering and stuff like that. But in the top of the canopy, that's where we can make the difference. That will indicate, that's where we can steer the plant still because if it's already in the belly of the, the plant, for example, when we talk about tomatoes, it's already been done. So I think, and, and that's that, that data source because their manual measurements are still less reliable than the rest of uh, the sensors getting better and better. But that part is still like a bit uh, difficult. And of course, uh, the root zone is also uh, very important, uh, where I think as an industry, we need to focus a bit more on. Of course, like people focusing on climate due to the maturity of the technology level. Uh, yeah. But of course, I, I think in the future, we do see a trend from the climate steering, climate monitoring to crop steering, crop monitoring as well. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the comment. Yeah. 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 And how do you, and, uh, what do you see then? If I can ask the, the question, how do you see it? Yeah, I think like uh, we already see a lot of effort are being done actually to use computer vision to use like uh, together with machine learning AI to replace or support this kind of manual registration. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, like to really count the newly generated leaves or the flowers or the fruits or to track the ripeness of the flowers and uh, track, track the ripeness of the fruits, etc. Um, but we we are like R and D institute. We're also doing the technology development, so we're also interested in these kind of fundamental developments, really more long term, I say five to ten years. So we're really hoping to see some game changer. For instance, maybe a camera can really look at a whole plant to check the photosynthesis efficiency or these kind of things. Um, that would be great. Yeah, that would, I think that would be great. I think that's gonna make maybe. The whole crop steering, climate steering, maybe simplify things a lot easier. Yeah, to, to simplify things. Yeah. Yeah, no, I fully agree. I, we still do a lot of things uh, based on uh, old way and, or the, the, the current way, uh, but maybe we need to think outside the box to create new ways. Uh, but yeah, I, I fully agree. But it would not be nice if there's something revolutionary coming into the sector saying, okay, use this and then. Uh, what might that be, Martin and Xu Zhang? What, what might that be a revolutionary disruptive development, oh, yeah. would you think? Where would that come from? Because Xu Zhang, actually he himself, you are from more the pharmaceutical, bio, um, medical field entering into growing world, isn't it? So 
Oh, uh, at One Planet, we're doing. We, we have two programs. We have a we have a digital healthcare program, but we also have the precision uh, agriculture and food program. But the, actually, the mentality behind the two programs are quite similar. Basically, like developing novel sensing technology, acquiring data, and um, yeah, developing algorithms or models based on the data acquired. Um, yeah, so we are actively uh, talking. To to professors and researchers from Wageningen and uh, university research as well, to really to see, really from the fundamental perspective, what are the most impactful or promising sensing technology to to have, as one of the supporting or as one of the feedback not in the whole control loop. But yeah, the it is a quite a challenging discussion. That's that's I'm going at this one. I, I don't believe there is a single correct answer there. Yeah. No. I think it's difficult because it's a living organism, and where we where we work with, um, and and in yeah, in different sizes, different shapes. Uh, uh, so it's it's quite difficult, I think. To, to, well, to who should we watching out for in this field? What are the most promising sector? Where are you looking for newcomers, either be competitors or competitive collaborators? In a sense, where where, where should you the next? Uh, be watching because technology area in this field is actually developing very quickly. A lot of innovation happening in other sector that could be revolutionary for, let's say, the more traditional agriculture world. Are you are you uh, keeping your eyes open? Of course, of course. But I think Fernando already mentioned it as well. I think uh, all sectors can learn from different sectors. If you you see uh, the auto industry. With uh, with robot arms and and using all those uh, automated processes via robots, they were doing this already like multiple years. And the last couple of years, you see the robot arms in, uh, incorporated in in potted plant systems, in in all those kind of systems to make life easier. But also uh, harvesting robots. So I think uh, if you look like if you you see what's happening in the, not only in, in in the horticulture industry but all industries, I think. We can learn a lot from each other, or uh, in the way of how things work. But sometimes it's also about um, cost price. What does it cost to make something, and uh, what? Yeah, what is the the benefit out of it? I think that that's always a cru crucial thing. And in horticulture, it's it's difficult to say, okay, I put this amount in, and I will get this out because there are that many. Uh, factors that can set you back uh, differently than, for example, uh, with a car factory. You know how much cars you want to build and you know how much uh, products you need to create that car. In horticulture, it's difficult to say, okay, if I put this amount of plants in my greenhouse, this will be the outcome. That makes it difficult. No, thanks. So maybe we can spend a few minutes about the sustainability topic because you briefly mentioned it in the, your presentation of the MPS and the Horti Carbon Footprint Calculator. Yeah. Um, again, in our platform, we address the topic of uh, certification uh, sustainability standard very much. And one problem is that there are too many. There's no shortage of, uh, of benchmarking and labeling. Um, and today you mentioned uh, yet a new one. So tell us, uh, and then we also have people here, I think Georgia, who works in the sustainability field. Um, how, how does this work? Is it just making things more complicated by having more data? Because now we have uh, not only different CO2, but also different the standard again. And um, well, how does it connect to the, uh, let's say, why, is, why are you not connecting, for example, with uh, Planet Proof? Um, or the, the, the bio, for example, or other type of uh, existing consumer, more recognized uh, uh, tools? The question is for me? Yes. Or oh, you mentioned your presentation, which is, I mean, yeah, MPS. No, but, yeah, MPS is already a, a, a well-known company, especially in the potted plant sector. Uh, well-known for many, many years. And okay. they have all the right uh, and that, that's a company with almost uh, i think 100 uh, uh, people working there they work in all countries all over the world from africa to to south uh, 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 south america and the whole world 
So if this is this is for the industry. It's a well-known brand. Foot prop plan, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, and, and this is a good collaboration where we say, okay, you already have the knowledge and and the, and experience in the product pen sectors. We have a lot of knowledge and and uh, and and experience in um, in food and vegetables. How can we combine that and also try to see how we can overlay those two kinds of sectors and incorporate those knowledges uh, from A and B together and to create not only the questions from the horticultural sector as in pallet plants, but also uh, use that for uh, foods and vegetables. So for us, it was a, 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 a yeah, it was, wasn't that it's like, okay, who's NPS? No, it was like, hey, it's NPS. So uh, we have the possibility to work together with them. Okay. Thanks oh. for the... <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, other questions from our audience? Dick? No, I, yeah. think, I think we've covered the whole field. Yes, we could we could dive into benchmarking versus standards, etc. But that is a whole new area. Yes, I think we have uh, covered a lot on the understanding of the uh, let's grow data philosophy or the approach and the plan empowerment philosophy. So also indeed learn a lot of new things actually about the collaborations in the sector and uh, yeah synergies with the other sectors. Um, I would like to thank everybody who joined us uh, today. Um, our next session will be about vertical farming, which is in one month. So I hope to see you back again. Martin, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your time and interest. And uh, thank you for inviting me. And yeah, yeah goes for all the people uh, listening and maybe uh, looking this back. If you have any questions or want to brainstorm a little bit how we can uh, work together, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, you can send an email to mto at let's uh, And then uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah, if you didn't get in the, the contact, you can welcome to contact us. So thank you very everyone and then have an enjoyable afternoon.